Teresa? Yes, ma'am. Mayor? Who is Paul Pittman? I see him on here. He's, he's coming to speak to us about something in reference to the Tennis Association. Oh, okay. I read that. I read it. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Paul. <laughs> And they're just waiting to send information for us to just to hear. We don't have any required action or anything like that. Yeah, I read the information that we got in our um meeting to R. Let's stand for invocation and pledge allegiance. <clears throat> this beautiful day, we give thanks. We thank you for the opportunity to serve this great city. We welcome you into this meeting, that you will lead us and guide us with your all-knowing knowledge, that we will do what's best for each and every citizen. I ask that you continue to watch over and protect us during this time of the pandemic, all of your people throughout the world. We welcome you because the only thing we want to do is to do things that will cause this great city to prosper and be in great health. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have before us our minutes from January 11, 2021, by regular meeting. If everyone's had a chance to review them, is there any necessary correction? If not, the floor is going to obtain a motion. So move. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion by Councilwoman Pat Gibson High Moore and a second by Councilman. Paul. Are you ready? Are there any questions? If not, great question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Let it reflect the minutes have been approved in effect. And now we have appearance before the council, Mr. Paul Pittman and Mr. Ernie James to make a presentation to the city council in reference to the Florence Tennis Association. Is Mr. Pittman or Mr. James on the line? Uh, yes, I am on the line. Welcome to today's meeting. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. All right. The floor is yours. All right. Let me see if I share my screen here. Let's get this going here. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Mayor Myers Irvin, members of the council, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Th thank you for giving us a few minutes of your agenda. We appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm, I'm Paul Pittman, and my co presenter, Ernie James, and I are going to talk to you for a few minutes about the Florence Tennis Association, about its relationship with the city, and about what it does for the community and for the citizens of Florence. First, a very brief introduction. Ernie and I are both past presidents of the Florence, past presidents of the South Carolina Tennis Association. I have served on the board of the Southern Tennis Association, which uh, serves a nine state region. And Ernie is currently on that board. Both of us are also active at the national level and serve on several national committees with the US Tennis Association. What we really wanna to talk to you about today is what we do in Florence because we think the Florence Tennis Association is a tremendous asset to the community. And we think we can uh, uh, convince you of that and convince you that uh, we're an organization you want to continue to work with. As you can see, the association is an all volunteer organization. We have uh, roughly uh, uh, 300 members at any time uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we're open to everybody in the community. 
development of town uh, and right from the association other but mr pittman give us one moment you're breaking up some there oh I'm can you hear me yeah that's an improvement okay about to second mission, the one that we think is just as important as the primary mission of growing tennis, become good corporate citizens, to serve the community of a way that uses tennis to benefit everybody. We work very hard uh, and that's the core of what we want to talk to you about today. Next slide, please, Arnie. So we have a second mission of working with the community and to support the community. And that's why our slow slides are based on the period since 2000. Now, that wasn't just an, alt uh, an altruistic decision. Uh, we were essentially looking at the fact that for what we want to accomplish, we need to support the community. Very hard to do that in an awful lot of ways. And I'm going to, with the next couple of slides, that go over a few of these. I believe you've already seen these slides, so I won't uh, dwell on anything in great detail. Uh, one of the main things we do is we host tournaments, uh, most of them at the ten tennis center now. Uh, we also uh, uh, support tournaments that are hosted by others there, including the city. And we provide most of the volunteers for most of the tournaments held in this community. About a hundred of them uh, since 2000, probably running now anywhere up to uh, 10 to 15 a year. Uh, those include uh, the professional tournament we run here, uh, the McLeod uh, for Health Florence Open. They also include several college tournaments, uh, boys and girls high school tournaments, uh, a lot of recreational tournaments, including state championships uh, and uh, a lot of youth tournaments. The tourism revenues alone would make us a good corporate citizen uh, because we do bring in uh, uh, dollars every year to support uh, the community. We manage the uh, adult leagues, uh, several thousand people playing year round here in Florence. Uh, we have staged over the years dozens of activities, uh, many of them no cost or low cost. Uh, and a lot of them designed to reach out to parts of the community that haven't traditionally been involved in tennis. And one thing that I'm particularly proud of, we have brought in quite a bit of money in grants over the years, and all of that goes directly back into tennis in the community. We support major charities. Uh, we provide youth activities in a lot of ways. Uh, we participate in community activities. Uh, it's not uncommon to go to something like the Pecan Festival and find us out on the streets with mini nets and, uh, and youth uh, size rackets and low compression balls, uh, letting kids bat the ball around and having a really good time. Uh, that's the type of thing that we do for the community when we can. Uh, We've also assisted uh, both the city and the county in uh, gaining funds for resurfacing uh, courts. Uh, and we work in an advisory role on many things related to tennis with both of those entities. Uh, uh, we um, I basically I are very much interested in working with local businesses and an awful lot of them uh, do advertising in support of us and we really appreciate that. There is a tick on this slide that talks about diversity. And I don't think I can overestimate that. Uh, uh, essentially, the, the national organization, the United States Tennis Association, which is the governing body for tennis in the US, has made a huge issue in re recent year, years of diversity, uh, involvement, inclusion, uh, trying to broaden not just its base, but its leadership. Uh, that has been echoed at the Southern level and at, and we were way ahead of the curve here in Florence in trying to make that a part of what we do. Our 11 person board is diverse. 
Uh, we are, we haven't accomplished what we want to accomplish. We, our goal is to make tennis in Florence look like the population of Florence. And of course, you know, that's a tough uphill battle in a lot of ways. Uh, but we are uh, number one in the state among the, the 21, I believe it is right now, community tennis associations in uh, the rate of our diversity. Uh, it's not great. It's nowhere near great, uh, but it's a step in the right direction and we're pushing hard on it. Next slide, please, Ernie. And I'm gonna turn this over to Ernie now uh, and let him uh, work with you. Uh, we've been around for 20 years and just quickly highlight some of the uh, uh, chosen in 2007 as the uh, National Community Tennis Association of the Year. Now, that may not mean a lot to you until you understand our competition was uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, Chicago, places in Florida. So the fact that a small city in, the, uh, in South Carolina was awarded this was pretty significant. Uh, we actually were recognized during the, the 2008 US Open. Uh, we've received numerous awards from USDA Southern, USTA South Carolina. Uh, we've been recognized for our community service by South Carolina Recreation Parks Association, uh, honored for community service by the Florence Athletic Hall of Fame. And we've gotten lots of uh, various awards uh, for local participants. Uh, our leadership, uh, we have two people that are on USDA national committees, uh, two people on the Southern Board of Directors. Uh, we've got seven people who are committee chairs or members, uh, three USDA South Carolina uh, uh, nine board members. Again, yeah, I don't wanna go through the whole list, but you can see that the folks that have been involved with our organization are, are truly committed to the community and it's being recognized uh, by others in the tennis world. Uh, what are we doing right now? Uh, we support some after school and summer youth programs at the Florida Tennis Center. Uh, we conduct adult and junior leagues. Uh, really, we're very excited about our adult beginner programs. We began that several years ago. Uh, even before the national recognized there was a need to do that. And some of the model after programs that uh, Florence and say that a number of people who came through our initial adult beginner programs have now become uh, active tennis players. I'm very pleased because it's a very diverse group of people who were introduced to tennis and uh, continue to play it. Uh, we're looking for some new um, tournaments coming to Florence uh, over the next year. Uh, matter of fact, it's gonna be a very busy year for, for tennis. We just concluded one yesterday. It was a college tournament that involved Francis Marion University and several out of town colleges, which obviously uh, uh, generated some uh, tourist revenue for the, uh, for the city. Uh, trying to develop our social media presence to reach a, a larger and more diverse audience and uh, working with city recreation and athletics uh, the sports tourism departments and local business to develop that program for children at the city's after school centers. We're really excited about that. Uh, we've had a great partnership over the year with, with the city parks and rec department, and we look forward to continuing that. Uh, we're so lucky here in Florence to have access to an outstanding and might I say world-class public tennis facility. Often when we have visitors from out of town come, they're amazed. Dr. Eddie Floyd Tennis Center is actually a public park. Uh, they're quite envious of the fact we have such a nice facility uh, for the public here in Florence. One of the things right now, Uh, and we would have started it already had it not been for COVID. Our current start date, very tentative, is uh, April 12th. Uh, the Ron James Youth Tennis Program uh, is named for Ron James, uh, one of the most uh, uh, helpful citizens of Florence uh, that I have ever known. Uh, Ron was the kind of pro uh, who, if you asked him to work with a youth program, and you told him you didn't have much in the way of budget, would say, I'll do it and I'll do it for free. 
Uh, he was just that kind of guy. He was great with kids. He was absolutely a super role model. And he's the kind of guy uh, that we all loved. And quite frankly, he's the kind of guy that this type of program should be named for. Uh, this will be an introductory after school and summer program for middle school kids. And we're beginning with the kids who are in the city's four after school centers. Uh, particularly uh, choosing that as a place to start uh, because they do have transportation that will be available to them. And it's always hard to get kids to the tennis center. And secondly, uh, because these are kids who typically go to Title I schools, uh, they're kids who don't usually have access to tennis. And we really want to show them a sport for a lifetime and one that can, can help them in many, many ways. Uh, we're going to run eight week sessions to correspond with the school schedule. Uh, and for their summer camp at the after school centers, we'll basically work on an eight week schedule there too. Uh, we'll be using certified instructors that come through the contractor instructor program at the tennis center uh, and are approved by the city director of tennis, Rob Hill. Uh, and we will pay them from the FTA. Uh, of course, we're going to have no charge to these kids. Uh, the equipment's going to be provided by the FTA. And if we can build enough budget, we want to be able at the end of each session to give the kids the rackets they've been playing with and, and let them have them so they can keep playing. Uh, the uh, emphasis is going to be on fun, on fitness, on sportsmanship, on doing something that will make what they do otherwise at the after school centers, which is homework, uh, seem like a lot more fun and a lot more rewarding. Uh, we're going to start this with uh, under the aegis of the uh, Florence uh, Tennis Association because we have an established board and we are a recognized 501c3. Uh, we will work it in collaboration with the tennis center and the after school programs and we've talked to them at great length about how we're going to make this this happen. Uh, our eventual goal with this is to make it a self-sufficient 501c3. Uh, within a, a year or two, we hope to establish a community-based board uh, that will uh, take charge of this program uh, with some initial guidance from the, uh, the Tennis Association. Uh, and we want to make it an NJTL chapter uh, with, uh, with its own board, which according to the NJTL has to be community-based. What we're thinking is we would have representatives of the city's program, of the FTA, people who really represent the uh, With that, uh, let's shift to the next slide. Now, there are three slides that are in the packet you have and a handout about NJTL. Uh, and Ernie and I are both tremendous proponents of this particular program. Uh, it's something that was started by Arthur Ashe about 50 years ago, uh, primarily to work with inner city kids. Uh, it has now expanded across the country to some 250 chapters, uh, last year working with about 160,000 kids, uh, and it's in all sorts of communities. Uh, uh, five, several started. The uh, big thing about NJTL is that it, it works in a lot of funny ways. Uh, first, by linking tennis and education, which we would be doing automatically in the way we structure our program, uh, you really put some motivation uh, behind the idea of uh, staying involved. Uh, and NJTLs across the country have reported significant gains in uh, school retention, uh, school graduation, uh, academic performance, social uh, before performance, uh, and in uh, uh, access to colleges. Uh, this is something we really want to buy into uh, because we think it's very, very important for a place like Florence to have that sort of program. Uh, we have at this point uh, applied GL network and we expect that we will be uh, put into that network sometime this year. Uh, and from there you work your way up uh, by, uh, by improving your program essentially and improving the participant. The next couple of slides are snapshots of, uh, of USDA Southern's NJTLs. You can see there are 63 chapters as of last year, uh, and uh, uh, they get some great results. 
Uh, the, uh, the five in, here in South Carolina include uh, fairly large chapters in Clinton and one that's very, very in the country in some, uh, where a individual who was on a board community done some amazing years recently interview graduate of that and and help uh, with the kids uh, in his uh, off it's a great uh, I, I basically shows that there are just a lot of opportunities involved in NJTL. Chapters don't have to take in part in all of these, uh, but certainly we'd want to involve ourselves in as many as we possibly could. Uh, and these are just extras. Uh, these go beyond what the NJTL actually does, uh, which is to give the kids a, a reason uh, to want to better themselves. Uh, and that we think is critically important. Uh, we want to involve families in the process. And in fact, part of our planning for our Ron James program is that at the end of each session, we will have a community get together where the parents will be invited uh, and we'll, uh, we'll have some refreshments and some recognition uh, for uh, the kids. And we'll do our best to make sure that, uh, uh, that the community uh, develops a sense of ownership for this program because that's very important. At this point, uh, you know, we always have an ask with things, uh, and we want to turn this back over to Ernie, uh, who's going to, uh, to ask you for some support. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, the ask. Uh, just in full disclosure, I want everyone to know that uh, I am personal friends with Councilwoman Barnes, and you know, I was speaking to her in advance of our meeting, uh, just telling her, you know, well, what are you going to talk about? I said, well, we're going to talk about the things that we've done relative to developing community tennis in Florence. Uh, but we're, we are gonna have an ask. And of course, you know, our ears perked up thinking we're gonna go after some money. That's not really what our ask is today. Uh, as, as Paul mentioned, we've got a program that we've got some initial funding to promote. Uh, but what we really want to ask you is in, is in this body is the continued cooperation and support uh, from the Recreation, Athletics and Sports Tourism Department. So, Again, as I mentioned earlier, we've had a great relationship with that uh, part of city government for a number of years. And, and certainly we expect that to continue. Uh, Rob Hill and his team over at the Florence Tennis Center uh, really understand our mission and they support it. Uh, and they understand you know, any, anything to grow the tennis echo structure uh, will eventually benefit the uh, Florence Tennis Center. So uh, just want to you know, point that out relationship so we'll continue uh, to allow us to uh, reach our goals uh, what we would like you to do is to, to give an endorsement of the Ron James Youth Tennis Program as a City of Florence uh, Florence Tennis Association uh, collaboration uh, that it would get positive positive uh, uh, promotion within the city uh, to let parents know that this is an option along with the other sports this is an option for uh, children in Florence to take advantage of. Certainly uh, by utilizing kids that are already in existing programs, I think that's a great place to start uh, because uh, in order for this program to be successful, we need a, a steady supply of children. And, uh, the city already has that in after school programs. We would like to offer this as an enhancement to the uh, after school programs. Uh, our long-term ask, uh, is to uh, find people who could eventually become a member of the community board uh, for our Ron James Youth Program. And, and we say this because for this board, you don't necessarily have to be a tennis player. What you have to be is a kid lover, uh, someone who wants to see children in Florence flourish and do better things with their lives. Uh, in preparation for this meeting, I was reading some of the websites of some of the other existing NJTLs, some of the things that they said, you know, the purpose of our program is to create better citizens. And I don't think any of us can argue about an opportunity to make our children better citizens uh, so that they can be valuable contributors to the world that they will inherit. Uh, another slogan that I saw is uh, 
bringing tennis and education together to change lives. And I can't say enough about that and the yeah, opportunity to change lives. Paul mentioned the fact that the NJTL that they began in the small town of St. George, it's been in, in existence long enough to have people come through the program, learn tennis, uh, supplement their education, go on to college. And now this young man is coming back to give back to the program that brought so much to him. Uh, I, I want to see that kind of legacy developed here in Florence. So another good example, if, you, if you're curious, uh, there's a program right down the road in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, they've been in, in operation for, for decades, and they too have a, a tradition of children that have gone through the program coming back after college and volunteering and getting involved with the program to kind of pay it forward. So that's what I, I, I hope to see here in Florence. Uh, and we want to grow this. We want to make it community-based. Uh, and uh, that's why we're asking you to just think about your network of friends. Talk to them about this to see if they may have some interest. We'd love to get some people from the education community involved since education plays such an important role in the whole NJTL structure. So that's our ask from you today. Uh, we're not asking for the pocketbook. We're asking for support and an endorsement of what we're trying to accomplish here. Well, Mr. Pittman and Mr. James, thank you both for your presentation today. To the um, council members, do you have any questions? Um, Mayor? The floor, you recognize Councilwoman Pat gets behind more. Mine is not really a question, but I do appreciate all that you're doing for us um, with the youth tennis program, because at least 10 years ago, the late Michael Hawkins and I, myself with the Alliance for Youth program, we wanted to show youth that there was more than basketball and football. So we actually built up our cars. He had a station wagon, hauled kids to Timrod Park to play tennis and to learn to get help. People, they, they, tennis was a big thing at Timrod Park and people would actually help them. One young man found out that he was very talented with tennis and he went on to college on a tennis scholarship. So I admire and commend you for what you're doing and definitely give you my support because it's it's a good thing for the, our youth of today because so many of our kids think that basketball and football is the way to go and it's not. There's a lot of other um, athletic services that's available and tennis is one of them and I'm, I'm so happy for what you're doing. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councilwoman. And, and again, uh, yeah, I, I tell you my, my quick tennis story. I grew up in Rochester, New York, uh, typical, you know, urban youth. I wanted to play basketball. I wanted to play football, uh, baseball. Uh, but my parents said, no, you're going to learn how to play tennis. And I kicked and screamed, but because I was a good child, I obeyed my parents and I went and took the tennis lessons. <laughs> and as soon as I got done, I went back to playing the other sports. But we fast forward to the day. The only sport I still play is tennis. So I'm be forever indebted to my parents who is, as I grew older, I realized how smart they were. I didn't think it at the time, but certainly as I grew older, I realized how smart they were, where they set me up with a sport uh, that I could play for a lifetime and give me an introduction. I've moved several times in my career. And because I played tennis, that was always a, a, a way into a local community uh, by just going to find out where's the public park where people play tennis. And I could go there and begin to meet new people and network. In fact, that's how I met Paul Pittman, and he got me involved in the, uh, the local Florence Tennis Association, pushed me into leadership at other levels of tennis, and now yeah, I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm trying to recruit other people and bring them into the leadership of tennis because it is, it's good leadership development. These are transferable skills uh, that someone could use uh, you know, anywhere they go. Exactly. Thank you so much, Mr. Pittman and Mr. James. Let me just add one thing to what Ernie said. There, because there's one thing we haven't hit hard enough, and that is tennis is not only a sport for a lifetime. If we can convince people, uh, they really can play uh, until they're seven years old. We know people who do that. Ernie and I are examples that you can pretty much get that far. <laughs> I, I'd also uh, I like to uh, uh, add that it is one of the healthiest sports around. Uh, it's a tremendous fitness sport. It's ranked right at the top when, by everyone who ranks sports in regard to fitness. And during the COVID uh, period, 
uh, it has been way beyond the top because it's a sport where it's very easy to social distance uh, and even in training, uh, even when you're doing clinics. Uh, so uh, it, it really is something that kids can learn and they can keep or come back to uh, and they will be very glad later in life that they did learn it. Uh, thank you very much. Once again, thank you, Mr. Pittman, and thank you, Mr. James. For thank you. Are there any other questions or statements? Yes. I recognize this councilman, Mr. Bailey. Uh, thank you. First off, I want to uh, join in with everyone in thanking you all for your volunteers, because you're uh, Mr. Pittman, and Ernie, uh, and, and, and I know you're Ernie, uh, and appreciate your uh, time and effort and, and devotion to trying to better our community. I just want to offer a, an, an acknowledgement of that I personally observed this past weekend. I went out to the uh, tennis center. I drove out there and it was jammed with cars all over the place. And so I was like, what the heck's going on? I didn't know that you had a tournament. I, I just happened upon it and, and drove through there. And sure enough, there was all these cars out there and I encountered a family leaving the facility. It was in the middle of the day. And so me being me, I rolled the window down and started a conversation with them. And sure enough, they were from Winston-Salem and they said, this is one of the finest private facilities we've ever seen anywhere. It's just really great private facility. And I was like, well, no, it's, it's not a private facility. It's a city owned facility and they could not believe it. So just echoing what you all had just uh, indicated a few moments ago, they just were floored that the city has provided a facility like this and they were highly uh, appreciative and complimentary of the way the program was being run, the way the tournament was being run, how professional um, they could not give high enough marks all the way across the board and said they will definitely be back. They were here for the weekend, staying in the hotels, eating in the restaurants. So the economic impact was certainly uh, all that. So I, I commend you all for that. I also want to commend you for you know, even, and Mr. Pittman, you kind of downplayed it, but I made a, a note here on the diversity question saying it shouldn't be better than what it is, but the part my ears picked up on is when you said that Florence is number one in the whole state in terms of right. diversity. And so let's give credit where credit is due that uh, it's on your agenda, that you brought it up, that it's a topic that is on the table, you're focused on it, you're working on it, and obviously achieving great results in that Florence is number one in the whole state of South Carolina. So we take our hat off to you for your efforts and your energy and for the success that you've been able to achieve in that regard. So on behalf of uh, the council, I just want to commend you and thank you for what you're doing. Keep up the good work. Uh, we certainly, at least I'm speaking for myself and I feel sure I'm speaking for all of council, this notion of the youth a program, the uh, NJTL, I, I think is, uh, I certainly uh, endorse what you're doing and I feel sure I'm speaking for all the council that we all endorse what you're doing. So it, it's, it's great. Oh, I do have one question about that with partnerships. Uh, is the uh, NJTL going to partner with any local organizations? And, and my note that I wrote down here, particularly like the Boys and Girls Clubs, or is there any efforts? Is there any way to collaborate and to form partnerships? Um, if you don't mind just briefly speaking to that point, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, I have been in contact with Neil Zimmerman at the Boys and Girls Club, and to another organization, Girls University, uh, which uh, works with kids who come from the same type of background. Uh, and in fact, leader of that organization as a member of our uh, FTA board. Uh, both of those organizations are expansion areas for us, uh, and uh, each of them has an educational component of sorts uh, that we, uh, we believe will, will help us uh, move into the NJTL network. Uh, the, um, uh, we simply right now are a little bad, but 
the limitation start this program be a little more we have uh, a five thousand dollar grant for the first two years uh, from the uh, south carolina tennis patrons foundation uh, we have uh, uh, grants of 2500 a year uh, continuing from the florence tennis association we have a local business group that is working as a fundraising committee for us and over has right now a little over five thousand dollars uh, in the bank for us. Uh, that gives us enough money to get started uh, on a very low end budget that would allow us to work with two of the after school centers uh, to get started. Uh, actually, we'd love to double that, uh, increase the number of kids we could do, operate this thing for different centers, uh, move it ahead. To do that, our fundraising the uh, and uh, and well, while we're asking, there's one other easily uh, a tremendous number of people know people who would like to work with us on fundraising uh, or who might be uh, willing to contribute to this. Uh, let us know. Uh, we are particularly weak at this point in the African American business community, uh, although we have some people trying to make some inroads there. Uh, but anything you could do that would help with that. Uh, our goal is to make this a permanent feature in Florence. Uh, and we know we can get started. Uh, going into the uh, to a 501c3 status and becoming an NJTL network member will help us uh, with access to larger grants. Uh, but we need to make sure that we've got a local source of funding that's, that's reliable too. Uh, so Yes, we are working with those organizations. Yes, we do want to include them. Uh, and uh, I, we see our partnerships as being very important. Important. They always have been to the FDA. Uh, and thank you for the question, sir. Well, thank you for that comment. And I would, uh, I feel sure that our uh, Matthew Christian, is a, a reporter on behalf of the Morning News is probably on this call somewhere. So I would uh, invite Matthew to uh, interview the two of you and run a big story so that you can put your request for funding right there in the article and we can get the word out. <laughs> I, I noticed that we were on the front page of the paper this morning, which was a surprise to me when I opened it up. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so uh, again, thank you for the comments. Absolutely. We're, we're, as you can probably tell, both Paul and I are impassioned by this. I, I think it's a great opportunity to present a, a challenges and new achievements for our young people. And I want this to really be strongly uh, another program, junior team tennis. Uh, my vision is to make that like little league and to have businesses sponsor the team, a tennis team. So when you walk in the restaurant, there's a picture of the baseball team, the tennis team and the soccer team that they sponsor. Well, to Mr. James and to Mr. Pittman, thank you for your appearance before us today. You're welcome. Know that the information you have presented has been well received, and we will review the information and for the communication, we will continue. And I'm sure that our city manager will be listening to any input from the city council, and we will be getting back in contact with you. So thank you once again for what both of you are doing. We appreciate the highlights that you placed this City of Florence and throughout the state. Your program you. is a valued program. I myself have played tennis before at a younger age. So I believe that athletics teaches individual special youth self-discipline, but also with the self-discipline, you learn how to be submitted to authority, which creates a followers who eventually create leaders. So what you're doing is more than just athletic development. We thank you and just and as you know, we are on the internet, and I'm sure Matthew will pick up the story, just like you said, you're on the, you're on the page, paper now. Thank you. Please continue to do what you're doing to help make the state of Florence be a better place for all who lives here. Thank you so Thank much. You. And at this time, we are prepared to move into our ordinance and positions. First on our agenda, we have bill number 2021-2. For a second reading, and this is an ordinance to add next four parcels located at 1534 and 1537, 1539 and 1543 North Sierra Range, identified as Florence County Tax Map Parcel 
Nine hundred ninety six zero two dash zero zero five nine hundred ninety six dash zero one dash zero zero eight nine zero zero nine six dash zero one dash zero one seven and nine zero zero nine six dash zero one dash zero zero second. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion in the second. Are there any questions? Any discussion? Are you ready for the question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the records reflect that bill number 2021-02 has been approved. Next, we will be in line for introduction of ordinance for first reading. The first bill is bill number 2021-01 for first reading in ordinance to adopt a model business license ordinance in accordance with the business license bill H4431 passed by the South Carolina legislation in September of 2020. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? second. We have a motion in a second, and we are prepared to receive some information from Mr. Yoka. Thank you, Thank you Mayor and members of council. You have before you, as the mayor stated, for your consideration, Ordinance 2021-01. House Bill 4431 was adopted by the legislature back in September. And been ratified by the governor became Act 176. This is a bill that's been worked on for probably at least six years in the legislature. Finally did pass it, and it was a favorable result for municipalities in South Carolina. It relates to business licenses and does basically four things. First, it requires all municipalities to use the same uniform classification of businesses. In other words, putting all similar businesses into the same rate class. Two, it requires a uniform payment date for businesses starting next year. That uniform date is April 30. The city's current payment date is June 15. So not in 2021, but in 2022, the payment date for business licenses for the city of Florence and all municipalities in the state will be April 30. Third, what it does is it provides a portal that will be run by the State Department of Revenue and Fiscal Affairs that the Municipal Association developed this portal will permit businesses that have multiple locations throughout the state, rather than having to cut multiple checks to multiple municipalities throughout the state, can make one payment through this portal. And then fourthly, what it requires, similar to how counties are required to do reassessment of property every five years, it requires all municipalities to do a rebalancing of their rates every two years in odd number of years, which is what we have gone through that and that's included in this ordinance. We'll have to do it again the next time in 2023. Uh, like I said earlier, based on upon the state law, the Municipal Association drafted a model ordinance, which this is a copy of. If you look at the ordinance, we're replacing pretty much everything else that was in city code relating to business licenses and replacing, we're repealing that and replacing it with this new model ordinance. Uh, one other comment I'll make before if council has any questions. I would be remiss in, if I forgot to recognize Teresa Eaton, who works on my staff and has worked with business license for over, you know, for a number of years and has been working on this very hard for the past six years. And now she and her staff are going to have fun getting everything implemented for this new law. And with that, I'll be able to take any questions that council may have. And I do want to thank you, Kevin, and also Teresa for all that you've done and your whole department. I know that this um, legislation has been legislation that the Nick Association had a lot of communication with and some concerns as well. So at this time, do we have any questions? Any discussion? I have one. The chair recognizes Councilman Bailey. Kevin, uh is this a ordinance that's being presented? Is this a model ordinance that the Municipal Association uh, submitted for all cities throughout the state or essentially adopting a similar ordinance? Yes, Councilman, all municipalities will be adopting and the Municipal Association is encouraging rather than us trying to take the various provisions of the law and putting it into our current code. Um, as I stated earlier, just repealing all everything we have related to business license and adopting this model ordinance uh, that's been prepared by the Municipal Association. City of Florence is in fact the first municipality in the state that will be doing this. 
Um, because of our great staff, we're really on the cutting edge and we're out front of this. Like I said, Teresa has been working on it for a number of years. Um, so as other municipalities get ready, the Municipal Association will be providing uh, this same draft model ordinance to those municipalities for their adoption as well. And I do want to comment that as you heard Kevin say, this is the issue that has been before the Municipal Association who have actually worked with the legislature to be able to get a model ordinance that we can adopt throughout the state of South Carolina. So this is a process that's been in place for quite a while now, and this is the end result. And this is what the Municipal Association has presented to us as cities throughout South Carolina so that we will be uniform, so that when a business want to apply in a particular area, they will have that quarter that they can go through, whether they happen to do something here in Florence, and then if they want to open something in Charlotte, having to go there, this way they have one quarter, quarter that they go to and centralizes everything. So this has been vetted by a municipal association who has recommended this to us. So that, that, was my, that was my understanding, but I just wanted to get that on the record, so to speak. So thank you for that, Kevin, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Is there any further discussion? If not, the chair will entertain a motion. Thank you, Kevin. Do we have a motion? To Excuse me. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Are you ready for the question? All those yes. in favor, aye, please. Aye. Any opposed? Well, let the record show that we have accepted this bill for the first reading, bill number 2021-01. Our next bill that we have is bill number 2021-03 for first reading. In order to declare surplus and authorize the conveyance of real estate known as Florence County Tax Math Parcel 90076-04-016 to Silver Leaf Investment. And we will now hear from Mrs. Scotty Davis if we can have a motion. Do we so moved. Do we have a second? So we have a motion in the second. We will now receive information from the manager's city, assistant city manager, Mr. Scotty Davis. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. We have a request uh, to sell property at 306 West McLeod Alley. Uh, as you stated, tax parcel 90076-04-016. This property is vacant property. It is bounded by a single family residence to the west and Drayton Real Estate Group to the east. Uh, we have been approached by the Drayton Real Estate Group, uh, also known as Silver Lease Investments, to purchase the property. Our staff has looked at the property. There appears to be no issues with selling this property. Uh, we've had the property, or Drayton Group had their property appraised for $6,000. They've made a request, uh, a purchase price of $6,000. If it's the will of the council, staff will draw up uh, a contract to sell the property. Is there any discussion? Thank you, Mr. Davis. So at this time, we've had a motion and a second. Are you ready for the question? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed, lack. Let the record forward that bill reflect that bill number 2021-03 has passed first reading. Next, we have bill number 2021-044 first reading in order to amend section 2-6.1-1 and 6-19-3.2 of the Unified Development Ordinance regarding the setback in the Commercial General District, your CD district. Do we have a motion so that we can hear from? Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. At this time, we hear from Mr. Dudley. Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor. Member Council. I will share my screen so that we can meander through my very brief PowerPoint here. <laughs> but the, there we go. Um, when we adopted the Unified Development Code in 2018, um, the properties that were previously zoned B3, which was our general commercial district, carried over to um, the new designation of CG, which is also titled our general commercial district. But in, in doing so, many of the 
requirements for setbacks and lot standards changed in that process. Um, for instance, I, I created a chart here. We can see that the um, minimum lot width in the old zoning was 50 feet. In the new code, it went to 200 feet in width. Um, the lot area went from 5,000 square feet as a minimum um, up to 18,000. Setback for the front went from 35 to 50. Side setbacks went from 5 to 25. Rear went from 20 to 40. And um, the maximum of impervious service um, or, or green space, um, or, or I guess developed space went from 90% to 85%. So it did allow a little more green space as well. Now, in, in doing that, there are some areas with pre-existing lots in the city, um, you know, in the Five Points area along the, um, the Palmetto Street corridor, the Evans Street corridor, um, and even when you get down to the, the MUSC, the North Carolina's hospital in that area, there are a lot of existing lots that do not meet these standards. So in, in doing that, as these lots develop, many of these parcels have had to go for variances. And while, while we think that's a path forward for many of the lots, there are certain areas where the character of the built environment could dictate um, the setbacks in those areas for the general commercial. So in, in our residential areas, in our neighborhood conservation areas, we have what we call average setback or, or averaging of setbacks where, you know, within a, a block or, or a defined distance along the street front, the, um, a new home that's being constructed could meet the characteristics of the built environment. So, you know, in many of our neighborhoods, that require, let's say, a 25 foot front, front setback. Um, the, the homes are actually built 15 or, or 10, even 10 feet from the front property line. So this gives them the option of taking that block and averaging the setback so that it meets the character of the area. This is um, uh, basically adapted over for that general commercial area. And like I said, it wouldn't. Um, it wouldn't be applicable in many situations. You know, if there's a Walmart next door or a Home Depot next door, those, those averages are huge. You know, it wouldn't really play in. But if they are in an area where, um, you know, they could benefit from this, um, we've written this up and it's essentially um, allowing lot averages within the block and within the district. So it has to be within the vicinity, but also within the general commercial district. You can't carry over into the next zoning district. And it allows front setbacks to be um, reduced to the average, you know, along the same side of the street in the same zoning district. Um, it allows said set side setbacks to be uh, adjusted to the average in the area. And it allows the rear setback to be um, reduced to not more than 10% of, of what's existing in, in the area. And um, so it does give some of these existing non-conforming lots um, a, a little bit of, uh, or an alternative um, to, to what the current zoning allows. And um, the, the next amendment in, in the non-conforming lot section, we just added this E section that refers them back to the actual setback section. And that's just to make the use of the ordinance um, a bit easier for, for developers and um, property owners to refer back to that section. So, um, this was for four planning commission um, last month, and they did unanimously uh, recommend this eight to zero. And this concludes staff report. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Mm -hmm. Are there any discussion? Yes, I have a question. Okay, doing a unified development ordinance, and I attended all those meetings. Um, it was developed the way it was for a reason. And now I notice it keeps coming to us for changes. So are we going to end up changing this ordinance completely? Because every so often I see it coming to us, somebody wants it changed. So then what's the purpose of the Unified Development Code if we're gonna keep changing it? It was a long list of talk or meetings. So are we going to amend every time someone comes to us for an amendment to it? Um, yeah, th thanks, Councilman Moore. This, this amendment was suggested by staff because of problems we've encountered uh, through working with developers. 
Uh, but but I do think any code or any any um, city code, especially a zoning code, um, is going to need am amended at, at certain times. And it, the Unified Development Code was, was such a comprehensive document that as we move through real world situations, um, it, you know, we, we're seeing how things on paper don't work in the real world often. But I, I believe that you know, as we make these changes, the intent of the Unified Development Ordinance is still upheld and, and it's always planning staff's intent to, to uphold the intent of that code as we move forward. Mr. Dudley, mm -hmm. um, question, with these changes that's being brought forth, will these changes still maintain the character of the area where this development will take place? Will it maintain the character and still be in in the goal of what you know, United you know, Development Code. So is it uniform and will it maintain that character as we move forward? Yeah, yeah yes. Um, a lot of the developers have expressed a desire to go back to the old B3 standards. And we, we as staff did not agree with that. Uh, we thought this was a much better um, solution to that. To, and it would only allow reduction in setbacks in, in certain areas where the character of the built environment would dictate that. So um, so yes, we, we do believe that the character would not be affected by the adoption of this code. It, it would actually be promoted um, by the inclusion of this. Are there any other discussions, any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Dudley. Mm -hmm. So at this time, we've had a motion in a second. Are you ready for the question? All those in forward favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record reflect that bill number 2021-4 has passed first reading. And now we're in for introduction of our resolution. We have resolution number 2021-03 a resolution of the city council approving downtown development grants for third quarter FY21. And this will be discussed in our um, executive session. Scotty, are you here for the board? So at this time, we will move forward to our report to the council for appointments to boards and commission. We will hear from Deputy City Manager, Mr. Scotty Davis. Thank Excuse you, me, Mayor. I didn't, Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I didn't get that in my, um when it was sent to me, the agenda, that wasn't part of my agenda. Your, the um report for appointments to boards and commission was exactly. not. Exactly. Um, should be able to. Did she get a hard copy? No, on the electronic copy. Yeah. Councilwoman um, Gibson I Moore, do you have the electronic agenda? It's in the electronic. Can you access the electronic agenda? Okay. It, when 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 was that? When was that sent? Um, that was sent out last week. I think it was last Thursday, correct? I had that. It wasn't in there. I looked for that, and particularly, I looked for boards and commissions. Which page? Um, it's on. Starts on page fifty-nine. Councilwoman, can you check for page fifty-nine and see if that's in your um packet? Yeah, I'm going. I'm look going to look right now. And if you can check, um, Councilman, I just, just try to see if I overlooked this somehow. I'm looking for it. Okay. I know I went through this thing. If I overlooked it, uh, I apologize. Let's see. I'm almost 
there. And I just forward my agenda to you as well. So you would have a new agenda in your, in your email. Fifty nine. Scotty, do y'all have any electronic? Okay, I do have it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I overlooked it, but I did. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I okay. Sorry about that. All right. So did we, we get our motion our second, correct? Oh, no. Can, oh, no. Okay. can we have a motion so that we can hear from Deputy City Manager Scotty so, Day? All right. So. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Is probably motion is second. We will now receive information from Deputy City Manager Scotty Davis. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of council. We do have uh, two openings on uh, commissions. The first one is our planning commission. Uh, we had a vacancy or a re uh, resignation from Jennifer Edwards. Uh, council Mayor Pro Temp Jabaley has this nomination. We have applicants from Applications from Shalonda Dees, Maya Green, Derek Lowe, Daryl Mitchell, Vanessa Murray, and Lillian Walker. At this time, okay. All right, so this is the planning commission that is Mayor Pro Tem Javeli's appointment. Yeah, I'd nominate Vanessa Murray for that position. Okay, do we have a second? I second. Is the proper motion is second that Ms. Murray I'll be appointed to this position. Is there any discussion? If not, we're ready for the question. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. Let the record for, reflect that Ms. Murray has been appointed to the Planning Commission. Next, we have the Housing Authority. Yes, ma'am. We have a vacancy on the Housing Authority. That was due to the resignation of John Etheridge. Uh, now, this term does expire uh, June 30th, 2023. Uh, this appointment goes to Councilwoman Barnes. We have applicants from uh, Castine Jones, Joe Lunder, Eric Robertson, and Linda Williams. Okay. And this appointment is from Councilwoman? Councilwoman Barnes. Councilwoman Barnes. Councilwoman Barnes, do you have a, a nominee? We can't hear you, Councilwoman Barnes. Sorry, I'd like to defer. Defer. Councilwoman Barnes is deferring at this time. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. That concludes. Thank you. All right, so at this time, we have an executive session. We have a discussion of negotiation and incident to matters related to a proposed economic development project. The 30 4 70 A5. Do we have an emotion? Motion that we adjourn to executive session. Okay. Is the motion second? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 We are now adjourning to executive session. Mm -hmm. I love tell us when we're live. So basically, we get back out, y'all. We always come out of it and we'll have a motion. To approve that, and we need a second. Okay. So, about your discussion to hold one moment, Scotty. Hold one moment. What discussion for negotiations? That's what this. That's that's the that's is the, the legal definition needed uh, for us to go into executive session to talk. About this.
Amin. We are now returning from a executive session in which we discuss uh, the negotiation incident to a matter relating to a proposed economic development project 30-4-70A5. And this is an action item. And at this time, the chair will entertain a um, motion from the council. So move. Second. We have a motion in a second that we sue and approve the items as discussed in executive session in relation to a proposed economic development project. Is there any discussion? If not, we're ready for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Black sign. Let it reflect that the item as discussed in the executive session has passed. At this time, we are going to prepare for Adjournment. Do we have an emotion? A motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I do want to just say thank you to the council and to the general public as we continue to move through our pandemic and we will proceed to continue to use Zoom as this manner of communication, but I also do want to recognize that this time in and all lives which have been lost to the COVID-19 pandemic and ask that we all stay persistent, that we may decrease our numbers throughout the nation, but especially here also in the PD. If there's no further discussion or question, all those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Let it be reflected that the motion to adjourn has passed and we are now adjourned.